welcome, welcome, welcome. I am super duper excited for this journey. I never thought I'd be writing another anthology, never had a vision for another anthology, but here I am. And my name is Vanessa Canterbury and I am the founder of Inspired by Vanessa. And when I decided to put a call out to action to see who was willing to share their story of those things that left them broken to now they have overcome some things and willing to share the transparency of their story in this chapter, I was amazed, just amazed. And so we're not going to delay sharing this chapter with you of this amazing author who joined us. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it over to her. Because once you hear a little bit about her, you want to be able to say, you know what, I need to get this book. Not only get this book for me, but I need to get it for somebody else because somebody out there is hurting as well. People don't know about four years ago, I did a um, journey of a five day, maybe it was seven days. It was a seven day journey and it was calling healing through brokenness. And I knew I did something that was so deep and so profound that so many people kept coming back for more. And I was like, Dag, okay, God, well, what are you doing here? And now to look these years later, look what's taking place, a book from it. But this is the thing with this book, it's going to challenge you. It's going to push you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to make you cry and share some tears. But the most important thing is going to give you hope. It's going to give you hope that when you read these chapters and you get to know a little bit more about these authors, you're going to say, dang, wait a minute, hold on. If they could get through it, I know I can too. So let's no longer delay sharing a story of this author here. Well, Miss Boyd, please. Introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Regina Boyd. Um, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm a single mother of three, um, a 19-year-old son, 14-year-old son, and a 10-year-old daughter. Um, I've been through a number of different obstacles in my life, and i um, a portion of my story I know a lot of people can relate to. Um, so I knew, I've always known that I had to get it out. Um, it's like a baby. It was something that I knew I had to to birth um, to help other people. Um, so here I am. I was connected with Vanessa, this wonderful lady here. I was connected with her um, by way of Ikena. Um, she doesn't really know my story, but I told her a bit of what I was trying to do, and I linked up with Vanessa. So here we are, and I'm just honored and overjoyed to share my story, um, like I said, because I just want to be a light to someone else. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that that the Lord has blessed me to get through what I went through to help someone else get through their trying times as well. So mm. here we are. One thing that I really like what you said, you said trying times. Ooh. The trying times, we are definitely going through trying times, but we still push through. Yeah. What made you push through those trying times? Well, what made me push through was my children. Um, like I stated, I'm a, I'm a single mother. I also was a teen mother. I had my oldest son when I was um, 15. I was 15 years old and I had my son. So um, I've always been resilient. The Lord made me mm -hmm. to be resilient. And I had to push through for my son and my other children. So that though they're the reason. They're the reason. And not only that, like I said, I know the things that I went through, it wasn't for no reason. You know, although mm -hmm. they were trying times. Those trying times and those those times that will test you, they often make you and mold you into who who you mm. are, you know. Mm. Um, and I'm the product of those times, you know. Um, they weren't all bad. Um, they all weren't for my bad. So mm -hmm. I just I knew that I had to, you know, operate in my purpose and keep pushing, 
not just for myself and not just for my children, but for other people that will be connected to me on my journey that were waiting on me um, to speak about the things that I went through and how I got through them to encourage them so that they will yet hold on through their trying times. I'm going to ask you a question. I always tell you what, take it up with the good old Lord. Mm -hmm. You ready? Let's go. Okay. What's, when did you notice that there was things that's in your, that was in your life that put you in a place of brokenness? I would say when I was a young girl, um, around the age of, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. Hmm. I told you take it up with the, I don't know where it came from because that <laughs> take it up with the good old it's Lord. okay because this is real. Um and when you are talking about brokenness and things that you suppressed and pushed down for so long, they're tied to emotions. So you're gonna get emotions. Um I would say that around eight or nine. And that's a very young age. Um, I'm sorry. You don't um, have to apologize. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for your truth, right? You don't have to apologize for for that. You, you don't. You know what I mean? You don't right. have right. to apologize because when we we have a habit of apologizing for something that was out of our control, right? Right. And it was like the best thing that you could be able to do is take control, take ownership and find out that little girl, that little girl that was eight and nine, because that's when my brokenness started, eight and nine. Yeah. yeah. When, when you see that little girl, what would you say to that little girl? Let's switch it up. What would you say to that mm -hmm. little girl, that little broken girl? What would you say to her right now, this adult right now, but I'm that little girl, what would you say to her? The one who just saying, came through some healing, the one who just came through some pain, the one who thought she would never overcome that person. What would you say to that little girl? I would say to her that you're worthy of everything that you desire, mm -hmm. um, that you're beautiful, that you're loved that you're amazing and that you can do anything that you put your mind to, that you're powerful, um, mm. that you're valuable Ooh. and that you're a queen mm -hmm. and you should carry yourself and operate in that. Mm. That's what I mm. would I would tell that little girl. Mm. You know, you told that little girl something that I needed to hear. Because yeah. I was broken around that age and it wasn't pretty. So I understand. I'm not just saying that just to say it. I understand. And it is a is a is a touchy, sensitive, um, and sometimes we feel embarrassing moment. Yeah. You know, um, it's sensitive to the touch, to the sound, to to anything around it that resembles what transpired. That little girl, yeah. it, that little girl that wanted to play and ride her bike and ride her skates and go to the park and be on the swings and play with her friends. That little girl. Yeah. Right? That little girl yeah. that was innocent. Mm -hmm. She was innocent. Um, yeah. And Vanessa, yeah. I found throughout the years that that little girl is a lot of other little girls that have there not, you go mm -hmm. they have not yeah. um healed they don't and it's not that they don't want to mm -hmm. it's that they don't know how they don't know where and, to start yeah and that was me that was me um i didn't know where to start um and for a long time i blamed myself mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, I went through issues and I'm still dealing with it. And a lot of times people don't realize that those traumatic events that happen to you, you know, you carry those things over yes. into your adulthood. So mm-hmm. not knowing how to um, be vocal mm-hmm. about things or I'm sorry, I'm just. Uh-uh. Why do you apologize for <laughs> healing other people? You don't you share something that's going to help somebody else, right? Yeah. You, you share yeah. you one of the things that I say when we go to my website, your story is somebody else's survival kit. Mm-hmm. Share your story. Somebody out there is waiting to heal, be whole again, or maybe yet they never felt it before. Yeah. And with you share your story. It helps you, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 it was hard for me to share my story. It I used to cry too. <laughs> I still cry when I think of some of the things that I had to deal with. As a matter of fact, I cried today of some things that I'm dealing with, and I just said, "Dang, God!" You know, we we question and say, "God, you picked me," and this is some harsh stuff. This is yeah. hard. It's heavy. Right? It's very heavy. And when that load is so heavy, you're like, well, what did what did I do? What what did yeah. I do? Why did you pick me to go Ooh. through those things? And why did you pick me so young? Could I could it not wait for a little bit longer so I could be able to make a decision so I could have mm. a choice too? My mind. Right? And when I realize, hmm, I tell people I took the time out to learn a history of the dysfunction I was born into Mm -hmm. the history of it, because it didn't start with my parents. It started before my parents. Mm -hmm. Right. And it started before their parents. That's right. But who's going to put a stop to it? Me. I'm blessed to be able to say I'm the first generation in my family to be able to put a stop and break so many barriers that was against me i beat the odds yeah i beat the odds because i said you know what i'm no longer gonna fight this thing i'm no longer gonna go back and be combative with people that don't even get it i'm not i'm no longer going to stay stuck where i know i don't fit into this box i'm no longer going to allow somebody put a cap on me when i'm limitless Mm -hmm. i'm no longer going to allow you to make decisions on my behalf Mm. on my behalf because you feel that I'm supposed to go along with it. Yeah. You you see what I'm saying? I stopped it. And with me stopping, ooh, ooh, it's a blessing, but baby, it's a curse. It is. Because now people looking at you like, oh, now you think you better than me. Yeah. I'm not better than you. I just don't want them little ones that I have. How dare you, bro? Yes. I didn't want my babies looking up at me. Exactly. Right. I didn't want my children. And now I have grandchildren. Look at at me, me and say, dang, you you went along with this, too. Mm -hmm. You you didn't you didn't stop it. You didn't feel that we was worthy enough to fight for us even harder to stop it. And so when I fought, I fought with every might in me. I took all the backlashes in me. Mm-hmm. To be able to say no more, you yeah. cannot continue this. Yeah. And so the healing journey is something powerful. It's so powerful to go and get the healing that you need. I never thought I'd be in this position. I didn't ask to be the matriarch of this family. That's right. But you were. I didn't ask you. for that. I you didn't ask for you. the load to be so heavy. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask for it, but God built me for it. That's it. That's mm. it. He built me for this because he said, I know you could do it, Vanessa. Mm. They didn't see what I see and know in you. They didn't see that. Ooh. You know, for a long time, I wrestled with that. I wrestled with God. Um, like you said, mm. why Why did you pick me? Um but he, hmm. you know, he called you and he chose you for a reason. Like you said, you were equipped and it has to stop with you. Um, 
I went along for a long time too. I didn't tell my mom my what happened to me until I was about 20, 22. Um, but I tried to go along to get along, you know what I'm saying? But I knew it was something in me that I just couldn't, I just couldn't keep it to myself, as they say. Um, and like I said, there are other women, not even just women, I don't want to, you know, just like it's something that just happened to girls or women. There's young men um, that are struggling, you know, with brokenness as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I know that this right here is a part of my journey and a part of my mm -hmm. purpose. So I had to be a part, you know, when I, when I heard about it, I was like, yeah, it's time. For, for so long, like I said, I just, I held it in, I, I, you know, but I had people, I've always been a light. I've had people that were just drawn to me and they would be comfortable with me to express and open up about certain things, you know? Mm -hmm. So for such a time as this, here mm -hmm. we are. You are stronger than you give yourself permission to be. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read something to you. Okay. And when I thought of this, I said, ooh. Many don't want to understand because I know I say some things. People are like, did you just say that? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I get that often. Take it up with the good old Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't allow their decision to be your permission without giving consent. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say it again. Don't allow. Don't allow their decision to be your permission without giving consent. Okay. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Break it down for me. That came to me and I said many would not understand it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Come on. Oh, you know, I can get so deep, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, do I want to go there? Okay, I'm going to give the good version. I'm trying. Don't allow their decision to be your permission without giving consent. Mm -hmm. People love to make a decision on our behalf. Yeah. And we supposed to go along go with, with it. And we gave permission, mm -hmm. but we never gave consent. That's two different things. Mm -hmm. Permission and consent. They're two different things. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people will go ahead and make a decision. So mm, mm. God said, hold on now. If I'm going to sit here and do this, I'm going to do this all the way. Right, Vanessa? Mm -hmm. So I got to give it to you the way he just gave it to me. Come on. Don't allow your family to make a decision on your behalf and you go along with it because they are your family. Mm-hmm. You didn't give them permission, let alone you didn't sign a consent form, mm -hmm. giving them permission to speak on your behalf, to make decisions on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. We right. have to stop and say, look, hold on. Don't speak on my behalf without speaking to me first. Mm -hmm. We have to say, look, enough is enough. And if you're going to be bold with this thing to break these generational curses, you got to set the tone. You got to set the boundaries. And then sometimes right. they may not like it. Then not let alone, they may not understand it because they've been used to dysfunction all this uh -huh. time. Yeah. Right? So yeah. now let's go along with it. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yeah. Don't allow their decision to be your, your permission without giving consent. Mm -hmm. Do you understand it now? Yeah. Yeah. We got to stop signing papers blindly. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Stop signing papers blindly and not reading the fine print. Mm -hmm. they, they're just they're going along to get along. Right. You just keep mm -hmm. accepting it. I remember, and I'm saying this because I remember when I said it to my mother, it came back to her a couple of times. But this one time in particular, I would never, ever mm -hmm. forget it. I said it to my mother that something had happened to me. And she, somebody came back and told her, because I said it to a friend, just in a conversation when I was a little girl. Uh -huh. And so my mother had said something to me. She never looked me in the face. Mm -hmm. 
never looked me in the face. I remember and I said, dang, this is the most hurtful thing. Mm -hmm. It broke me even more because it took me back. It took me back to that place as when I told you the first time. Mm -hmm. When I told you the second time. I told you and confirmed it the third time. Yeah. And so now you come to me and you say, and ask me, did you say this? And I said, yeah, I told you that several times. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that you could say to me is looking straight ahead, not looking at me, not looking at your daughter, looking mm -hmm. straight ahead. Don't say that because it never happened. Wow. So imagine you took me back to the decision, that decision that mm -hmm. somebody did it to you, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody gave them permission, but you never gave your consent. Right. right. So now you turned around and did it to me too. Mm -hmm. So when we get a chance to know the history and a lot of people are afraid to go back yeah. and learn the history of where this trauma started, that yeah. will allow them and put them in a position to heal. Yeah. And it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, it's it's, it's never mm -hmm. pretty. And I'm finding like a lot of times people mm -hmm. don't want to sit in that. They don't want to no. feel that. No. So, because mm -hmm. I, I did it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one, I don't really like to speak about things that I don't know nothing about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I ran from, from my healing for a long time because it's not pretty. It doesn't feel good. And oftentimes we run from those things that don't feel good. But when you learn that pressure make diamonds, mm. sometimes you got to sit with that ugly truth for a long time. I try, I looked out for everybody else's feelings and, you know, I'm not going to say this and not going to say that because of how this person might be viewed or, you know, protecting everybody else when I never felt protected. Mm hmm I never felt protected, but I, me being who I am, I was trying to protect everybody else. How, how this going to make this person look or how this going to make them feel or how did, you know, yeah. but your truth is your truth and my your truth, truth is my truth. Mm -hmm. It happened, you know, um, and I'm here today, the woman that I am today yeah. because of it. And that's my whole thing. Like, I would pray and ask the Lord to use me to be able to inspire other mm -hmm. people, to encourage other people, to motivate other people. And I know I don't look like what I've been through. And that's our glory to God, mm -hmm. not me. I don't look like what I've been through because of God. He made me this way. But I have a story mm -hmm. and I want to be an example for other people. You know, a, a, a young single mother graduated high school you know the lord provided for me and my children it was many nights you know i didn't know i didn't have to figure it out i still don't have it out figured out but the lord has provided for me and he's carried me up until now and like i told you i just want to encourage other people keep going keep pushing i battled with depression anxiety mm -hmm. all of those things from you know not knowing how to deal with what I went through, but just coping for mm -hmm. so long. Um, and I know that there's other people that have dealt with it. Um, you know, I, honey, like I said, I just look like this. I've had, you know, suffered drug addiction. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, a numerous different things, but I don't look like it, you know, but I have a story to tell. And that's why you mm -hmm. don't, you don't judge a book. Yeah. The cover because you, you have no idea you know that's like like the tip of the iceberg people may look at me and view me one way but you don't know my story you don't know my story you know um so that's why it's good to just be be aware you know what i'm yes. saying when judging people when you you know you got your nose turned up and you know and all of those different things because you don't know what this person has been through or what they're going through. Mm -hmm. and, and, and who are we? Yep. Who are we? I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has joined us and who has comment. 
feel free to share this out. Tag someone, let them know we are here. We're going to be all week doing this book launch for healing through um through all of this. This is this is really a healing week. That's the best way we need to call it. The healing week. <laughs> and um you won't be disappointed with these authors and their story. So let's go ahead and um it wasn't your fault. Let me see if I can find it. This is what um this is uh Oh, this is another author that's in a book. She said it wasn't your fault, and, and it wasn't. Here's someone else's, um, Jasmine. We got to change, be the change agent. Yes, Jasmine, change the narrative. Exactly. And the growth in you will make someone else feel uncomfortable. Grow anyway. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. And so um, it's relatable. People are really relating because a lot of times, who do you know? Who do you know shares their story that's transparent with their story? Yeah. That's willing to be bold with their story. Yeah. That is not unapologetic for their story. Right. Sometimes we don't share our more most. We're not even gonna say sometimes. Most of the times we don't share our story because of what we feel that other people are gonna people. say. That's or better yet, will somebody else read this? Will somebody else understand this? Or, you know what, just forget it. But baby, healing through brokenness mm -hmm. is real. People are going through it. They are dealing with stuff that they want to scream. Mm -hmm. They want to get on that ledge. They probably on the ledge. But if you just share your story, yeah. you don't have somebody else get off that ledge. Right. We got to stop Wait. suffocating people without tell because we don't want to tell our mm -hmm. story. They are suffocating mm -hmm. in silence because that was me. I suffocated for so long. I was the drowning truth. inside in my own, in the my own pain. Free. I was dealing with it by myself. I couldn't call my mother. I couldn't mm -hmm. call my father because both of them was broken and it was a cause of my trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who am I going to call? I had to understand the power of building a relationship with God. Help me through this because right now, this right here don't feel good. This right here, I don't understand. This yeah. right here, how can you? I have questions and can't get no answers. I'm yeah. looking for somebody to be able to put closure to this brokenness. Ooh. I'm looking for somebody to be able to say, I'm sorry. But one thing that he said, baby, one thing you got to understand, because we all his children, you ain't never understand until you understand. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so I want to understand. He said, I'm trying not to. Lord Jesus, on this oh, yeah. journey. <laughs> on this yeah. journey, when I first started, when I noticed that I was repeating the same cycles. Mm. Lord Jesus, I was repeating the same cycle. I already had three kids. I was in my mid-20s. I was um divorced, a single mother. I was living check to check. I didn't have I, back then. I really didn't have a relationship. Still, I don't have a relationship with neither one of my parents. I was the black sheep. Still is the black sheep. Um, but when they needed me to clean up the mess, they want to call me and be the captain. Um, mm -hmm. I was the one who showed up when the parents didn't show up to events for their grandchildren. I was the one who was standing in the gap when people wasn't standing for me. I was the yeah. one that was the prayer world when I didn't understand about prayer. I didn't understand the power of prayer to the point where I sat in myself. In the pain that I was dealing with, because I noticed this is not my life. Mm -hmm. This can't be my life yeah. because I'm duplicating everything that I seen growing up. I'm dating men and marrying men just like my father. Mm -hmm. I am my mother. Yeah. But I don't, I, I, this right here, I noticed. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to pass this on to my kids and say, oh, that, that, that's, I gave them permission. Mm. Without getting my consent. Yeah. One thing that he said to me was, it's going to be all right, my child. And mm. I walked around my house, that silent voice, and I repeated, it's going to be all right, my child. It's going to. And it was a low lifted off of me. And I did not know when he whispered that silent voice in my ear, I didn't know that what he was going to take me on was more powerful, more uncomfortable. Oh my God. Mm. Come on. <laughs> than I ever You're uncomfortable. experienced. It was the most uncomfortable thing ever. 
-hmm. But he said, once you surrender, let's see, baby, we got to surrender the thing. That's and it. at that moment, I had surrendered that thing. And when he Ooh. surrendered, he said, okay, mm. less than a month, I moved to a whole nother area that I prayed mm -hmm. for. I went in and I went when um, the, the place was, um, I had three kids, well, little ones, you know, they were still in school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I drove around. I said, God, is this the area for me? Have your way. Because all I'm doing is trying, I don't know what else to do no more. Because right now, these habits that I have right now is what I was seeing, what I was taught, what's embedded yep. in me. And I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And so I turned around and I just surrendered everything. Mm -hmm. I don't look, I'm not, I can't do make no moves without him first. He, he's my doctor. He's my consultant. He's my therapist. He's my friend. He's my confidant. He's my father. He's all of that. Mm -hmm. I surrendered everything to him because I don't know what I'm doing, but I know you know what to do. Right. And when I surrender, he took me on this journey. Less than 30 days later, I moved into this ooh, beautiful ooh, area ooh. and turned around. And the man said, the person who's supposed to come today, they didn't put down a deposit. They never showed. But if you want the mm. place, go ahead and put your deposit down. I wrote the check. I knew what was in my account. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't have it. But I wrote that check anyway. It never, not one time, returned it back to void. Mm -hmm. Not one Glory time. That's when I knew. I'm about to be on a journey that's about to scare the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. And in that journey, he showed me some things and it was, oh, it was painful, but it was a blessing. Yeah. It was a blessing. See, we love, mm, we love to return back to the scene of the crime, mm -hmm. looking for answers. And that's what had to take place. He had to take me back to the scene of the crime. Mm -hmm. The scene of the crime, where all my trauma started yeah. in order for him to say, look, look what I'm about to build you up to be. Mm. I didn't know. I had no clue. And it was more stronger, more powerful than any. It was more potent than anything of people showing themselves where I could see you now. Mm -hmm. You showed yourself before, but I could see you now. Mm -hmm. Because he showed showing me some things, and I yeah. said, "What the heck is going on here?" And it was times where I thought I was gonna lose my mind. Yeah, yeah. And even on that journey, it wasn't pretty. But baby, that was the best journey I ever been on, and yeah. I'm still on the journey. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't thing, change a thing. I wouldn't change you know, a thing. thing. Now, one thing. But it was a blessing and people thought that I was losing my mind. No, I'm not losing my mind. What I am doing is changing my mind. Yeah. Because my mind was lost when you allow things to take place. My mind was lost when I sat there and kept pushing and hoping and praying that you go own up to your stuff. I'm 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 in this how you gonna get an apology from a broken person? That's they right. They don't see they on they, they, they ain't doing nothing wrong be, in their eyes. They ain't do nothing That's wrong, right. and it's not, not gonna be genuine anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I had to accept that. I had to accept this journey that I'm on is who is is deep, Vanessa. But yeah. this is gonna be the best journey, and it was. It was the best journey. I will go. I tell people all the time: go on that ride. Go on that ride. Be and, and, and surrender completely on the ride of the journey of healing, and what took place. That was in my twenties. That was so. That's about to go twenty five years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, when I look back, going back to the scene of the crime, hmm, I got all the answers. I got all the answers. He was like, I had to show you. Yeah, you yeah. was that teen mom that was sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yes, you only got a high school diploma, mm -hmm. and. But baby, you got an anointing on you that people didn't even know. Yeah. You you've been you have overflow on you that you didn't know. Yeah. You were you are you a powerful force. You you the chain breaker in this family. That's right. That's right. You go, you're the leader of the pack in this family. Mm. You're gonna build a village that you didn't have for your grandchildren and your children that you prayed for. That's right. And so that journey, baby, the journey is beautiful. The journey is beautiful. 
We got to trust the journey. That's it. And now when I look now, 10 years ago, I just been doing this for 10 years. I mm -hmm. didn't know this was what I, I was going to do. But then he had to bring it back up again. Yeah. I said, oh, Lord. So you're telling me there's another level to this thing? <laughs> oh, Lord. And I went on another level. And I said, dang, well, what? It, how much more? Yeah. He said, you always got to be a student. That's right. You always got to be a student. I've always yeah. heard people say it, it gets greater later. Ooh. And I feel like a lot of a lot of things I went through, I didn't understand. But um, mm. the Lord has been revealing things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm now I'm seeing why. OK, why I went through that or, you know, why he chose me. Like like we said before, why me? Why not you? Yeah. You know, um, but the it, it get heavy. It can hit me, but it's, it's, it's so worth it, you know, when I encourage other people or, you know, I have conversations and I, I, I tell them a portion of my story and, and it just encourages them to or motivates them to keep going. You mm -hmm. know, I get joy in that. I yeah. get joy in helping other people and, and pushing other people, you know, mm -hmm. to their full potential, you know, and, and having those conversations where they have to tap in and, and, and pull up that, that ugly side, the ugly stuff that they don't want to so yes, that yes. they can heal. You know, because like I said before, I wanted to hear. I just didn't know how. Yeah. And like I'm finding with the with the the older generations, they didn't know how. Like you said, yeah. those curses, they just consent. The curses are real. Yeah. Those curses are some real, yeah. real things that people keep pushing up under the rug and that's yeah. gonna hope that it gets better. Okay, but if you're not taking action on it, it baby, it's gonna get better. It's yeah. not going to get better. And I, I'm I'm grateful that the levels that I have, he's taking me on this other journey too, and it's just deep. And I'm just like, dang, <laughs> okay. But I know I'm covered. Yeah. That's the thing. I know I am covered. And that alone, I'm okay. I'm I'm okay because he covers me. I could, hmm, I was proud of myself this year. No, it was last year, but I noticed it this year. And it was something, it was a conversation. I can't remember what had came up, but I said, dang, wow. When you could sit at the table of those who've done you wrong. Ooh -wee. That's when you know that you've healed. Maybe. Mm. When I say I had to pat myself on the back mm -hmm. because I was like, mm. And I was even tested at the table. I was tested. I was like, don't worry about it. God got this. Mm -mm. Let don't me ask you nothing. this. Have you have, have on your journey? Had you ever thought that you were healed or you had gotten past something? And like you said, you were tested where you had to be around the offender or the person and the emotions just just came back. But you thought I you, knew you, you, got, you said what? I, I was there. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was there and it was like it was my representative. It wasn't me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was at the beginning of the journey. It was like I still had so much because think about it. When people say, you, you know, you have to go through forgiveness. And the first thing that we think about a forgiveness is that, well, don't you know what they did to me? And da -da 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 -da. And that was me. That was that was the journey. And then I had to really be honest with myself. Do they really give a damn? Mm -hmm. Do they, they some people are just here out to just destroy people because they're broken, right? Right. And once I realized that they ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. That it has nothing to do with me. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna forgive you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love you from a distance, depending on who this person is. Right. And because I have so I have several. And I had to love like my parents. It's the person, they're the ones I say love from a distance. I love my parents. I forgave my parents, mm -hmm. but I love them from a distance. Yeah. I have to, right? If 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 I don't, if I don't, they turned around and take the power. That I worked so hard to gain. Yeah. Because you right? end up going back to from which you right? can. I can't. And so now the boundaries are so high. 
like with both and this is this is the thing today and that people don't understand it. and i'm i said this before and i'm gonna be transparent since we talk about the healing journey <laughs> let's do it let's go so today i found out that you know um that my father is in the hospital last week my mother was in the hospital and um you know i get the updates or what have you and i'm just like okay and i had the the way that i feel is the way that i feel mm -hmm. yes you can do updates i do the you know whatever i can but i'm not going to jump to mm -hmm. the demands because they're my parents yeah. right i have to protect my peace every time i come around is some type of mess mm -hmm. and if i'm coming around what what i need to get in mm, and i gotta get out yeah because they have it already in they in, embedded in them yeah that's um, what they um, used to right and so they're going to put on this for their, their representatives See, i'm not showing up as my representative i'm showing mm. up as me now my representative don't precede me it's me that's it. me yeah. right and so once you get me baby when what and it's interesting this is my goodness it's crazy how much i've grown oh lord jesus thank you <laughs> when people like in my family know how i am they know like if i'm coming in the room about something or if i gotta talk about something or whatever the case and take care of something in this dysfunctional family and mm -hmm. i'm a black sheep and you, you treat me like crap and like if i don't exist or whatever my sister was like Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you serious right now? I will go in and they always talk like, look, don't don't you get her started because <laughs> I'm going to you can sit here and say whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. I'm coming in so I can get back out because I know what you bring and mm -hmm. I'm real big on my energy. I got to yeah. protect my energy and yeah. my peace. Because when I go home, I got to go home to my sanctuary. Yeah. Right. And I don't need to bring none of your negative energy. Your I don't mm -hmm. need your aura. I don't need none of that. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't need that around me. So what I'm going to do, I go in, do whatever I got to do and get up out of there. Mm -hmm. But try me. And I remember one time I got tried. And before I knew it, I had a straight face and I could laugh at it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look straight ahead. And it was something that was said. And I'm just looking straight ahead. I finished what I was doing. But before I knew it, you know, like the matrix, I turned the top half of my body around and addressed the person. Uh -huh. And it, and but you could hear my family say, Oh, y'all don't got her started. I said what I said, I meant what I said, and I turned right back around. And I was waiting for my mother to say something. Mm -hmm. Because I knew she was the culprit of the mess. Mm -hmm. And so she sat there like, don't do that. Yeah. Don't don't keep throwing rocks and hiding your yeah, hands. Mean. Yeah. And then you think I supposed to sit here and catch every ball that and every rock that you keep throwing. Yes, and then guess like like they don't, you know. Yeah, you, know, you can't do that to people. Uh -huh. So you wonder why I don't come around because that that's not it's okay. Too much energy. It's you so know, much energy. Yeah, energy. One, one thing that people say when well, you know, ooh, I wrote about this in my book. That mm -hmm. people say that, um, well, that's your parent. Well, what about me? Okay. <laughs> what yeah. about the damage that they keep on causing? What about the betrayal they that's keep good. doing? What That's about cool. all the pain that you constantly keep causing? You you keep chipping away, just chipping away. Yeah. You can't keep chipping at what I stay away from. So it's kind of like devaluing, you know, you yeah, want me you, to devalue you're not gonna do that to me. Who so I am. What I'm going to do. I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and keep my peace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wish you the best. And I'm going to love you from a distance. Yeah, Family is family, as they say. I say family is what you make. Mm -hmm. It's not what's in your bloodline. I have met some most amazing people, amazing people. That's not family. That's not family. Yeah. So we have to create 
our own sanctuary. We got to create our own peace. We got to create that and stop waiting for permission to get it. So with that being said, what's your chapter? Tell us about the name of your chapter and a little bit about your chapter. Why would you name your chapter what you named it? Okay, so create the village. Look at Jasmine. Yes, that's my she's part of my village. So you gotta you have to. So the name of my chapter you're in trouble. And I didn't understand it. I didn't really get a village. I didn't either for a long time. Um, and like I told you, I had well, okay. So the name of my chapter is Lost and Found of My Identity. Um, and I named it that due to the traumatic things that had happened to me, you know, early on in my childhood, I felt like I was robbed of my identity. I didn't know who I was. You know, like I told you, I didn't value myself. I didn't feel like I was worthy. I had abandonment issues. I felt Mm -hmm. like no one cared about me. No one loved me because of the things that happened to me. I felt like they were allowed. I didn't feel protected. Um, So I feel like I lost my identity. I didn't know who I was. I was trying to figure out who I was. Um, like you you stated, the 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 cycle had, was continuing, you know. Yes. Um, I didn't value myself, I was promiscuous, I, I ended up getting pregnant at an early age. I had three children out of wedlock, single mother, you know, and these that's what I saw. My mm-hmm. mom had us, she was a single mother, she had three children. Um, so I was repeating the pattern. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't really know what love was. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't I grew up on survival, you know, and I, I realized that a lot of times people operate out of what they know, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it's not intentional, but I feel like that we have to make a choice. Yes. That this is it. It stops here you know, and do whatever it is that you need to do to stop the cycle. Because Mm -hmm. I found out we do what we want to do. When I realized that I didn't want to continue on the way that I was, I was going on the path and the journey that I was on, I I wanted to stop. I didn't like that. I wanted to do something different because this has already been done. This has already been done. So I began to work on self. Um, I've always grew up in church. And I've always been spiritual. I've always had a connection. Um, You know, the Lord has always favored me and covered me. A lot of times Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why people didn't like me, you know, or or people was jealous of me. I didn't really even much care about myself. And I would give anybody the shirt off my back. So I'm trying to figure out, well, why they acting like this towards me or why they don't. But like you said, there was an anointing. Other Mm -hmm. people saw things in me that I didn't see in myself. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know who I was. Mm-hmm. But as I got connected with Christ and, you know, went on my journey of healing and tapping into those ugly things, and that ugly side that I didn't want to face, I began to learn who I was. You know, God calls me, you know, his own. You know, he created me in his likeness, in his image. You know, he values me. I'm the apple of his eye. You know what I'm saying? So... I just got connected, got in my word um, and just got just tapped in. So I began to discover different things about myself and why I am the way that I am and why he created me the way that he created me. And I know it was for a reason and a purpose, you know, so I I began to embrace my uniqueness Mm -hmm. and I began to love myself um, because I didn't know what that was. I didn't know Mm -hmm. what that felt like. Um, I grew up in a home where we didn't really express love for one another. You know, we took digs and talked about each other and, you know, fought each other and things like that. I didn't really grow up in a household that was, you know, calm and loving and where we told each other that we loved each other or where my mom told me, you know, you're beautiful or I love you or just you know, poured into me like that. So I don't know what that was. Like you said, it was dysfunctional. I kind of, I grew up in a dysfunctional home no. and that's not a dig to my mom. She did what she knew to do. She did what she, 
she probably saw, you know, um, yeah. she did what she could. But I've also found that we can't always blame our parents. It's up to us. If we want to see yeah. change, we have to be the change. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I began mm -hmm. to get emotion to make those changes because mm -hmm. I know I wanted my, my children to experience something different. So I began to do different things. You know, mm -hmm. I began to love on my children and express to them and tell them that I love them and pour mm -hmm. into them, and hug on them and kiss on them. And, you know, I know sometimes I probably get on their nerves, but oh, well, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but I, I yeah. created that for them, you mm -hmm. know. So I just began to just change some different things because I wanted to be different. I wanted to be the change. Um, and like I said, the Lord just started revealing different things in me that he placed in me for a reason, you know, and for a season, you know, like I said, for such a time as this. Um, so that's that's the reason why I named my chapter Lost and Found of My Identity. Mm. You know, take it up with the good old Lord. <laughs> Uh, man, take it up with the good old Lord. I should have brought my mug that said, take it up with the good old Lord. Because, honey, he just said, leaders lead. That's right. That's leaders right. lead. So he puts in us what he knows that's in us. Now, are you willing to lead? Are you willing to tap in? Mm. Because you have to tap into that. That because that's some oh it's deep and so many people don't they go to the grave with it in them and Jeez. I knew that I didn't want to do that mm -hmm. um it's expensive at the grave site yeah yeah people don't realize that do you know the mm -hmm. most expensive place in the world is the grave site dreams went yeah. to the grave site they talked about it but they never put in the work. They thought they were too old. They thought it wasn't possible. They mm -hmm. they were sold on somebody else's dream of failure. Ooh. So they picked up somebody else's dreams and said, you know what? If it didn't work for them, it ain't going to work for me. Okay. I'm just saying. So mm -hmm. don't include yourself in the most expensive place and, uh, and leave residents. Mm -hmm. Residents. Yeah. In that place. We want to see the possibilities mm. so we can be able to be the change makers, the leaders of the pack, because somebody else felt them. Somebody else let them down. So what can we do? Can we show them with our stories right. by taking massive action, taking this thing serious and say, this is our life. We only get one life to live. Let me show you what I got and allow God to enhance it and take yeah. and pull into me in ways that I thought those people that could have poured into me should have poured into me but couldn't pour into me because somebody didn't pour into them. That's right. That's right. That's the right. healing journey is real. Healing journey is real. Most Get definitely. your healing. Get, be okay with that. If I got to go sell somebody's couch, go do it. Mm -hmm. if, if that means getting you Ooh. a coach to do whatever that you got to do. I, I'm trying to tell people, I can mm. go sit on somebody's couch too. They say, girl, if you don't get off this couch. But anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> I have clients that I coach outside of the business of uh, birth and books. And it's just the most amazing thing how I'm like, I'm, why me? You know, sometimes I'll be like, dang, you really want me to what? And just to hear how they was like, Vanessa, thank you. Don't thank Ooh. me. What you always okay. say, you got to get out of your own way. You got to get out of your own way. <laughs> get out of your own way. It's not me. Yeah. It is not me. I'm just doing what God has called me to do. We all have a calling. Mm -hmm. But when are you going to answer the call to your calling? Is That's the question. It. That's it. That's the question. When? When? And so when I look back and I tell God, I say, thank you. I thank you for trusting me with this assignment. Because mm -hmm. it's serious. It is. Oh, it's so serious. Other people's and lives. And you get tested in ways. Mm -hmm. 
when I say I get tested in ways, I'll be like, dang, he's mm -mm. that test, baby, right there. That's that testimony. Don't mm. worry about it. Come on. Come on. So we got to go on all the tests. Like I just told you, I was just tested today. And, and we, I'm going to talk about that uh, later. And I got the best revelation from it. Why? Because I could be able to go to my father. That's Help right. Me. Help me and give me what you know that I need at this moment to get through this. That's right. He'll do it. Mm, and he and my goodness, the healing is necessary. It's a requirement. Yeah. It's a requirement. But you got to be willing to do the work. And it's it not is. going to be pretty. One thing I said in my first book, I said, stop. Picking and choosing what you want to be broken from and what you want to be blessed with. Mm -hmm. We got to stop doing that because you over here picking. No, that's too hard. That's that. Oh, I can handle that. But I, I, I don't want to do you picking and choosing what you want to be broken from. And then you want to pick and choose what you want to be blessed with. Either you're going to get everything on this plate or you don't get nothing at all. That's right. Because it's it's a whole path to this thing. And the path sizes may not be bigger than the next. Some may be a little bit harder where it's like it's getting stale right now because you keep procrastinating on that task of getting to this pile, the piece that, that you know this is the biggest blessing for you. But you just keep on saying, mm, I'm not ready for that. And it's getting hard now. Okay. How much harder are you going to allow this pie to get? But you said that you want to be able to get the whole pie. You want the whole pie of blessings, but it's one more lesson that you got to learn. But you just keep letting that pie get stale. It's hard. Now you got to throw it out. Mm. But every time you come back to it, that pie piece is still it's going still to be there. <laughs> Girl, okay. they dance around it forever. Ooh. Take it up with the good old Lord. Tomorrow mm -hmm. I will be coming back with my cup. I'm going to bring both of them like this. <laughs> <laughs> Healing through this journey has been absolutely amazing. Healing through brokenness is real and it's raw. Is real and it's raw. How has this journey been for you? It's been different. I will say that it's been different. Um, you know, at the beginning, I'm like, I had all types of emotions, doubt, fear, all of that, you know, but I'm like, I had to just push that aside, pray about it, you know, um, even up to now, I'm like, it's uncomfortable, but I know mm -hmm. that that's what the Lord does. He shakes up some things and he has to get you out of that comfort zone so that he can get you where you need to be. Um, it's been very different and, but I've enjoyed it. I, I'm, I'm proud of myself um, for tapping in and, and doing what it is that I was called to do. At, at did I work your nerves? Age, you said what? Did I work your nerves? <laughs> no, you didn't work my nerves, but you stayed on me. You like, and you all about the deadlines. Um, I need it by such and such. When, when you, I'm like, uh, just get, I don't you, get out of your own way. And I'm like, you know what? You right. You right. And I, I got to it, and here we are. So I've been I've enjoyed it. The process has been, like I said, it's been different, um, but I've enjoyed it, and I know that there's more. There's more. Well, that's more in you. There, yeah. I read your chapter. It's way more in you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see. Yeah, that I read real. every last chapter. I read all the books. I I do. And if I see something like, hold on now, now you skipping. What what's up? What we doing? We're yeah. not skipping through this. Stay this tuned. That's all I'm going to say. Just stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> right. Stay tuned. Because there are so people love to write a book but want to give the surface stuff but don't want to give the hard stuff. Let me stop. But um, so yeah. with that being said, <laughs> they do, right? They want to, I want to give the top person. The, they the, they, they want to give the, the cute, like you said, the representative. Yep. Yes. And I, and I let people know, if you're not willing to go deep, I'm not the one for you. But the real and the raw is what people can relate mm -hmm. to and connect to because I can't help anybody if I'm lying. Yep. I can't help anybody if I'm, you know, pity patting and playing around with it. Uh -huh. Now, this is what it is. 
You know, it's this is real. my truth. And the yes. truth shall set you free. Yes. You know? Yes. I, I want to share um, with, with um, the audience. I want you guys to make sure you reach out to her. Make sure that you, she's going to post her link on, on a, um, at the bottom. And when she shares this out, make sure if her story relates, her chapter relates, you need to support this lady. You have to support it. I'm telling you, people are really going through something and they just don't even know if they could get out. When you pick up this book, it's going to give you hope. But this book is more than just a book. We're going to announce that later. The book is more than a book. Yeah. Just get ready. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. It's going to I'm excited. leave you speechless. <laughs> it's going to be like, dang, I didn't know that I needed help. I didn't know that I wasn't. A, I didn't know. You know what I mean? It's going to give you that, but let's give you some answers to the things you didn't know because yeah. you are not alone. You are definitely not alone. I, I, I like to talk about and share things that I have experienced that I can relate to. I can't talk about something that I can't relate to. That's right. Right. To give you my honest truth. And in this book, these ladies, they shut some stuff down. They, I'm just saying, they do. They shut some stuff down because they gave you the rawness of them and the things that they had to deal with. They share things that people are too afraid to talk about. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. They share things that too many people are afraid to talk about. They image. They don't want to talk about their image. I don't know how they're going to look at me. or or You know what I mean? Somebody could relate. Yeah. Make sure that you support her. This book is going to be absolutely amazing. The book comes out next month. So you better pre-order your book because if you don't pre-order your book, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Don't get mad. Don't get mad when everybody talking about the book. I'm just saying. There are some powerful messages in this book. I'm telling you. <laughs> I read them. It's powerful. And there's power when you can support and to be able to let other people know, baby, you are not alone. I got you. This could be a book where you could sit around with your family members, sit around with your sisters, and let's talk about it. Let's talk about healing through brokenness. All right? With that being said, please close us out with the beautiful message, um, Miss Lady. All right. Um, I would just say, like she said, Hit me up later and um, pre-order your book. You don't want to be left out. Um, and I would just say to just tap in to that ugly side or that 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 younger self and, and heal because somebody else is waiting on you. Someone else is depending on you um, for that and be that change that you want to see. It's, mm -hmm. It starts with you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So with that being said, if you are interested in writing your book or writing your own anthology, feel free to reach out to Aspire by Vanessa where we can be able to see if you are a good fit. With that also being said, this has been an amazing, amazing time. I just love having the conversations, just having a conversation with a person. You'll get to know them on another level versus something being scripted. We don't mm -hmm. do scripted here. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us in hearing the stories. And, and we hope that we motivated you in some type of a way. Make sure that you reach out to Miss Boyce so you can be able to get your copy, autograph copy of the book. Did you hear what I said? Autograph copy of the book that's going to change lives one household at a time. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, good night. Bye.